My friends, I have very bad news to share with you and very good news. Let's start with the very bad news. Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. My name's Sam Evans. Great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. If you're new, make sure you check out some of the 3000 videos we've created over the last 23 months about electric cars and the future of the automotive industry. I'll put the most popular videos in the description. Australian coal plants are producing less power, uh, but they are producing much more toxic pollution. They're also in many cases making a loss. People don't realize this, but Rethink X or Singularity University pointed out in 2014 that coal plants that don't actually operate at 70% efficiency lose money. That's pretty much a universal global rule. That's a big problem, especially in Australia, where we still use a lot of coal and where that coal is being disrupted by the grid. What do I mean by that? Well, Australians have more rooftop residential solar than any other country in the world. I'm talking percentage wise. Highest percentage of solar adoption from just residential mum and dads, many of whom drive EVs, by the way, now, than any other place in the world. Now, wouldn't you think this would be a country absolutely ripe for an EV transformation? Well, guess what? New Zealand just hit 22% market share. A lot of that is thanks to their strategic change to the automotive industry. They're charging you for pollution. You pay for pollution. This is how it should be in Australia. Eventually, coal plants will probably go bankrupt. But before they get there, they're producing less power and more toxic pollution. Unfortunately, coal-fired power plants are one of the biggest contributors to air pollution in Australia. That's despite recent closures, outages, and many breakdowns. Yep, coal power plants break down frequently. Probably something you don't get told because the, uh, the industry doesn't want you to know this. It's just, shh, quiet. The industry also doesn't want you to know that uh, the emissions from these coal plants are very bad for you. Just like the emissions from a car, equally bad. Now the media never talks about this, do they? Isn't that interesting? The analysis by Environmental Justice Australia is the latest in the wake of dozens of studies showing the damage that fossil fuels generally and coal power plants specifically are wreaking on human health. As many of you know, my wife was recently diagnosed with stage four incurable cancer. Basically, they said it's a death sentence to her. Now, I didn't realize this, but I always knew that there was some contribution from cars to cancer. I just didn't realize how bad it really is because the media never talks about this. Very interestingly, they have the data. It's being sent to them by scientists and they don't publish it. Why is that? Hmm. Oil and gas, paying for their bills, maybe, I don't know. Parent owners have investments in oil and gas, maybe. I don't know, but the truth is here, unfortunately, the emissions from cars are the biggest contributor to cancer in terms of global emissions contributions to cancer. They say that around 6 million deaths are caused per year as a result. That's data from the World Health Organization. In 2021-22, Coal power plants produced 7% and 5% less electricity in New South Wales and Victoria, but air pollution increased, according to data crunched from the National Pollution Inventory. This is ridiculous. How can this even happen? Coal burning power stations are among the biggest polluters in Australia, causing serious health impacts in the community, including increasing rates of asthma in children, contributing to low birth weight in newborns, and the development of serious heart and lung conditions, says Environmental Justice Australia senior campaigner, Joy Tooze. The technology to reduce this pollution exists and is widely used around the world, but shockingly, coal-fired power stations in Australia continue to operate without best practice controls, exposing millions of Australians to unnecessary levels of preventable air pollution. Reneweconomy.com.au says less power, more pollution. In Victoria, mercury emissions rose by 12% year on year, with AGL's Loy Yang B being the worst offender. 
Fine particle pollution is up. Fine particle pollution is actually really, really shockingly bad for you. With the volume of PM 2.5 released, or particles in smoke with a diameter of 2.5 micrometers rising by 10%, and PM 10 rising by 11%. How is this possible? I mean, uh, they're actually making less power and creating more pollution. The data comes from the first full year to include the Environmental Protection Authority or the EPA announced new license conditions for Victoria's three remaining coal power plants as well, which added limits on mercury and particulate pollution for the very first time. The rise in air pollution is indicative of the laxity of these new limits to said. Basically, the new limits, they do nothing to help improve air conditions. They're just not strict enough. In New South Wales, all five coal power plants reported increased mercury levels, which rose by 18%, while PM 2.5 pollution is up 7%. What this means is, on average, pollution increased by 10% across these main population centres in Australia. But the actual power generation decreased significantly. Nitrogen oxide, a particularly nasty organic compound, which is believed to play a significant role in the development and cause of cancer, touched 2.23 kilos per megawatt compared to 1.3 kilos in Victoria. In other words, it's much worse in New South Wales. Vales Point Power Station was the biggest culprit and has since received another exemption from New South Wales EPA to continue polluting above its license limits for nitrogen oxide. Basically, the power plant said, oh, it's too expensive to do. And the government went, oh, yeah, yeah, right. Okay, no worries, we'll give you an exemption. What's the point of a rule if you don't actually enforce it? Mount Piper Power Station near Lithgow says power production dropped by 32%, and yet pollution rose 147%. PM10 pollution by 78%, and mercury by 60%. This is absolutely ludicrous. I mean, it's crazy to think that these are not even the worst. Queensland is actually worse. The biggest polluters in Queensland are Stanwell, Milmerin, and Tarong power stations. And they're among the top 10 sulfur dioxide polluters in the country of more than 2,000 reporting entities. Tarong also tops the list for PM 2.5 pollution, and it joins Stanwell, Gladstone, and Calide in the top 10 of nitrogen oxide polluters. These four are also in the top 20 of mercury polluters, with Milmerin Power coming in at number eight, says renewaleconomy.com.au. Power plants are one of two sources of controllable mercury emissions, the other being metals production, according to a paper looking at emissions between 2000 and 2020. Within the coal-fired power plant sector, we find that emissions from black and brown coal-fired power plants were roughly equivalent from 2000 to 2016. Following the 2017 closure of Hazelwood Power Plant, black coal-fired power plants now account for around 60% of sectoral emissions, said the authors of the paper published last year. Last year, a stern warning from 99 experts in the Lancet Medical Journal said fossil fuels are exacerbating the health effects of climate change. Although globally, deaths from coal burning are down 18%, between 2015 and 2020. Part of the reason for that is that coal power plants have actually, in many countries, gone out of business completely. Studies have long shown the kinds of dire consequences of air pollution caused by coal power plant pollution. Minimal exposure to PM 2.5 particles may increase the risk of lung cancer, as well as other heart and lung conditions, as do sulfur and nitrogen oxides while mercury causes impaired cognition and development delays in babies. Now, I really advise this strongly. This is not shock and awe tactics or anything like that. But honestly, if you live near one of these power plants, move away. I mean, if you, if you have to live there, I don't know what you can do, but, you know, eat the healthiest food you possibly can. Try to meditate. You know, try to do all the things to keep yourself and physically and mentally healthy because it's really, really bad living near one of these coal fire power plants. But if you can, move away, especially if you are pregnant. A report by Greenpeace in 2020 suggested that 800 people die prematurely in Australia every year due to illnesses caused by coal power plants. 
We know that coal-fired power stations are a major contributor to the air pollution that causes a significant health burden to the people of New South Wales, Lake Macquarie's GP Kathleen Wilde said. While many are aware of how air pollution contributes to lung problems like asthma and emphysema, there is increasing evidence that it contributes to your risk of heart disease, cancer, dementia, low birth, baby weight, and several other diseases. This is why there are limits on nitrogen oxide and sulfur dioxide chemicals that pollute the air from coal power plants, and it is a health concern to the Lake Macquarie and Central Coast communities that exemptions have been granted to Vales Point Power Station to massively exceed limits on air pollution. Here's the good news. First, the good news, then the really good news. Victoria released its air quality strategy in October 2022, but voices of the Valley spokesperson of the Trove Valley, where the state's remaining coal power stations are, has been excluded from the plan. However, while the plan does not specifically outline an exit from coal power, it does highlight the state's renewable energy capacity goals and its incentives to move towards clean energy sources. New South Wales has an air quality strategy from 2021 to 2030, which explicitly talks about a requirement to improve air impacts from coal power and committed some of $2 billion in air quality funds to coal innovation. It also outlined the state's exit from coal power over the coming two decades. Almost all analysts now say that by 2035 in Australia, coal power will be dead. By 2030, more than 80% of power generation in Australia will be 100% clean and come from purely renewable sources. It's very, very likely that by 2033 at the latest, there will no longer be any operating coal power plants in Australia. I've talked about why many times on the channel. If you want to see more videos, updating you on what's happening worldwide on coal power versus renewable energy in the battle to save the planet, well, make sure you stay tuned. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.